Iron deficiency anemia, especially in middle-aged to elderly males and in postmenopausal females, can sometimes mean cancer. So the causes for iron deficiency anemia are broadly divided into two categories. They can either be because of decreased intake or decreased absorption of iron, which is more common in the developing world. Or this can be due to increased loss of iron, which basically is through chronic bleeding. This is more common in the developed world, but also happens in the developing world as well. Chronic bleeding can be in the form of bleeding from the GI tract, and this is actually one of the most common mechanisms of iron deficiency anemia. And this bleeding can happen from important causes like cancer. In some studies, up to 60% of patients with colon cancer have iron deficiency anemia before diagnosis. Due to this fact, most of the patients who are in these two categories in countries like in the UK, they will end up having an upper and lower GI endoscopy to look out for cancer. Iron deficiency anemia is suspected when there is anemia along with the presence of microcytosis and hypochromia, which basically means the RBC size is small and there is less hemoglobin per RBC. To confirm the diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia, we need to have a ferritin levels done. Now if the ferritin levels are less than 30 micrograms per liter, then we have caught a confirmation of iron deficiency anemia. However, if the ferritin is more than 30, then this can actually still be iron deficiency anemia. The reason for this is that ferritin is an acute phase reactant, which basically means that whenever there is any infection or inflammation, this will lead to increased production of ferritin in the body. So we will have in, we can have a falsely normal or even raised ferritin count even in the presence of iron deficiency anemia. So if the ferritin is more than 30 or if it is high then we need to see if the patient still has caught. If the ferritin is more than 30 we need to perform another test which is called the transferrin saturations which is abbreviated as TSAT. If the transferrin saturation is less than 10%, then we have got a diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia confirmed again. If there is presence of inflammation, then even some suggest even a level of less than 19% in presence of inflammation can still suggest the presence of iron deficiency anemia. If the transferrin saturations are high, then we need to look at alternative causes for anemia. Transferrin saturation is actually a ratio of serum iron levels and total iron binding capacity which is an indirect measure for transferrin levels in the blood. Now as we know if someone has got iron deficiency anemia body would try to produce increased transferrin and which this would mean that their total iron binding capacity would be increased which would translate into a low transferrin saturation levels. Serum iron levels can be misleading on their own because if someone has had an intake of iron rich diet or if someone has had an iron tablet for example 
then their iron levels can circulating iron levels can be falsely high so serum iron levels in alone do not signify anything total iron binding capacity is important because this helps us differenti in differentiating other causes of microcytic anemias from iron deficiency anemia so in iron deficiency anemia this total iron binding capacity would be increased whereas in other causes like in anemia of chronic disease total iron binding capacity would be decreased or normal but the ratio takes both things into account and if it's, if this is less than 10% then this is very characteristic for iron deficiency anemia to summarize when the anemia is microcytic and hypochromic then iron deficiency anemia is suspected to confirm the diagnosis we would check the ferritin levels if they are low that is if they are less than 30 then this would confirm the diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia if they are raised which can be because of acute or chronic infection or inflammation the next step we need to do is to check the transferrin saturation levels which is actually a ratio of serum iron and total iron binding capacity if this is low uh, less than 10 percent then the iron deficiency anemia is confirmed once the diagnosis is confirmed we need to look for the cause of iron deficiency and especially we should focus on if there are any risk factors for any gi malignancy or any other pathology which would lead to increased chronic blood loss from the git most important of which are of course the gi cancers but can also be in the form of peptic ulcers and the blood loss can also be from other areas for example genital urinary areas so remember iron deficiency anemia in these categories of patients can mean cancer so look out for it